Welcome to this day for this Tuesday, May 2nd. I'm Paul Ortiz filling in for a vacation in Lisa Hart. She'll be joining us sometime next week. Well, today on our program, we'll have Siobhan Foster. She's our CEO and general manager of Village Management Services. And we have some very interesting topics for you today. One is how we're going to control costs by programs that are being implemented by management. And we're also going to be telling you about a dwelling live training that you can take. Dwelling live, one of our new softwares that we're utilizing here in our community. You'll be able to learn how to really use it and that way you don't get frustrated and get around it pretty quickly. And there's a terrific new bus that you'll be seeing around the community and I think you're going to really enjoy seeing that as well. So that's going to be right after our next break. And also we're going to bring you Rebecca Gilad and Willie Phillips and they're with the Community Builder uh, Bridge Builders and they're having an event on May 15th. That's going to be at 7 o'clock in Clubhouse 2. A very interesting speaker. I don't want to spoil it, but I think you're going to enjoy that interview a little bit later. Well, let's uh, also take a look at some of the meetings that we'll be having today. That's going to be the Golden Rain Foundation. That's going to be at 9.30 this morning. That is their regular meeting. It is live if you're watching our morning program. That'll be here on Village Television. And of course, you can watch it virtually as well. And you can always just go to lagunawoodsvillage.com forward slash meetings. And we have uh, some weather we want to be talking about. Let's take a look outside. It's going to be a kind of a, a w kind of a cool, drizzly kind of day is really what I want to say. It's going to be uh, temperatures probably in the 60s for the next five days. It looks like a chance of rain as well on uh, Thursday. That's 80% chance of rain. So that means it probably will be drizzling pretty good. And if you're uh, getting up early, like a lot of us, you'll see there's a lot of drizzle and kind of some damp dampness uh, in the, you know, around the properties. And uh, that's been happening throughout each morning. But it looks like it's going to kind of clear up a little bit on Friday and Saturday. And we hope you have a pretty nice weekend. Our sunrise and sunset, our sunrise this morning was at 5.56 a.m. And our sunset this evening will be at 7.39 p.m. If you had a chance to see the sunset yesterday, you kind of saw some very thick clouds up above and a little bit of marine layer down below. And it was a wonderful sunset. If you had a chance to get out there and take a look at that, that's going to be at 7.39 this evening. And also, we want to tell you that uh, earlier this month, the Golden Rain Foundation Board of Directors lost a great man, that is Don Tibbetts. He served Laguna Woods Village for over 20 years, volunteering his time and talents to both the United Board and then to the GRF Board. Don and his wife of more than 65 years, Mary Kay, were residents of United Mutual since 2000 when they moved into a village to retire. They're going to have a service for him on Friday, May 12th. That's going to be at 11 o'clock at St. Nicholas Church, just around the corner from us. And that'll be a memorial service for Don Tibbetts on May 12th at 11 a.m. at St. Nicholas Church. At Healing Hearts Emergency Animal Hospital, we are dedicated to emergency veterinary care through high quality veterinary services and compassion. We offer state-of-the-art diagnostics at competitive pricing. Our doctors will see and care for dogs, cats, and most exotics. In case of emergency, rest assured Healing Hearts Emergency is here for you when your primary veterinarian is closed. Open nights, weekends, and all major holidays. Did you know that the Laguna Hills Lodge was originally built as a place for relatives or friends to stay when they were visiting? In 1968, Laguna Woods' residents built the first two buildings of the lodge because they wanted a place close by for visitors to stay. Since then, the lodge has become the spare bedroom for the Laguna Woods' residents. The lodge has received the TripAdvisor Award of Excellence eight years in a row. We invite you to stay in one of our recently remodeled garden rooms and take advantage of a special offer for Laguna Woods' residents, family, and friends. Do you have cavities, broken or missing teeth, tooth pain or other dental problems? These issues can create more problems than you think, including affecting your overall health. Don't wait until it's too late. Contact Loberg Dental today and your first exam and set of x-rays is free without insurance. It's a great way for you to experience our high quality level of patient care while saving money too. Visit drloberg.com to schedule your free exam and x-rays today.
Join us now is Siobhan Foster. She's our Chief Executive Officer and General Manager of Village Management Services. Good morning. Good morning, Paul. You wanted to follow up with some information that you and Lisa had talked about in the last couple of weeks, and I was just looking at it. I mean, there's a lot of great pro programs that are going to be implemented for our residents to not only save money, but also help them get around a lot of the tools that we use in this community. Absolutely. Great. So I just wanted to highlight some follow-up items, if you Absolutely. will, this morning. I wanted to start with um, ways residents can help control costs. Mm -hmm. And then I have a couple of items that VMS is implementing to control costs mm -hmm. as well. So starting with that, we talked previously about opting out of paper mailings. Mm -hmm. Residents can save money by opting out of paper mailings and going electronically. Uh, there's a new Senate bill that took effect this year, Senate Bill 392, that requires each member to receive a written request to indicate their preferred delivery method. This notice is going to arrive with the 2022 audited financial statements in the first week of May mm -hmm. or thereabout. And we're asking residents to please watch for it and return the form. To opt out of receiving hard copy mailings and receive these communications electronically, residents can email information at vmsinc.org or drop off or mail their form to the Laguna Woods Village Community Center. This opting out will opt residents out of the mandated November and April mailings, which cost approximately $7.50 per member. So if 12,000 members were to opt out of paper mailings, we would save $90,000 a year. Wow, that's considerable. It is. Or even if one third of our members opted out, that would save more than $30,000 right. per year. Uh, residents are also encouraged to help reduce costs by using Dwelling Live, Easy Pay, and other technology tools to save additional costs. Registering guests electronically, for example, instead of using the telephone to call resident services for gate clearance can save up to $1.60 per call. And they usually have quite a few calls, so More than don't just think of it as $1.60. It's it, talking to Chuck Hall. Exactly. Yes. yes. Yeah. And so to this end, we've been working with the PC Club mm -hmm. to offer new computer training classes to our residents. The first class is Monday, May 15th at 1 o'clock, and this will cover Laguna Woods Village Access Computer System otherwise known as Dwelling Live. And this will include how to manage guest passes, overnight parking permission, online from a smartphone, tablet, or computer, sending a QR code to guests' email addresses, and receive notification as a guest passes through the gate. Mm -hmm. They're also going to offer a Laguna Woods Technology Tools class on Thursday, May 25th at 1 o'clock. And this will cover the use of a variety of technology tools, including Dwelling Live, the Ticket Portal, the Resident Portal, and Recreation and Special Events Department apps. So to register, you can register on the PC Club website by selecting the class registration in the left-hand menu, or at the PC Club here on the third floor between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. daily. Right. And that'll enable uh, management to really, you know, save staff time when people are wanting to provide some of these services. If you can do it all online, it's, it's going to save the community thousands of dollars each time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And free up staff for higher priority items Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Right. And then I wanted to highlight this morning ways that VMS employees are reducing costs. One is through the purchase of new buses for the transportation program. On the screen before you are the new RAM ProMaster 3500 buses. We recently took receipt of two buses. These two passenger, I'm sorry, these eight passenger ADA low floor buses have entered service. Mm -hmm. The buses cost an estimated $35,000 less than the 18 to 22 passenger buses that are used on some routes currently. Right. The buses also offer increased fuel efficiency. 19 miles per gallon city compared to 10 mm -hmm. miles per gallon for the current larger buses and will generate approximately six to seven thousand dollars in annual fuel savings or forty two to forty nine thousand dollars over the life of wow. the buses yeah that's quite a savings when you consider the other buses were quite a bit larger Correct. and you know sometimes you only had two or three people in those buses so as far as efficiency it really wasn't efficient at times but um, this is a great alternative to saving the community money and great transportation. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're excited about that. Yeah. 
And then um, we've talked a little bit in the past about the new irrigation system that is coming online. This is our GRF project to install a new irrigation master control system. This controls the 470, 407 excuse me, remote irrigation controllers for more than 600 irrigated acres of landscaping in the village. The old system had no re remote access, mm -hmm. and because of that, and the irrigation system runs at night and weekends, we had difficulty responding quickly to right. breakages and other irrigation issues. Absolutely. Uh, the new cloud-based weather track system uses reliable cellular communication. This allows technicians to adjust irrigation cycles remotely, making fine-tuning the system efficient. It alerts technicians during off hours of problems and communicates daily weather reports to controllers to automatically adjust run times. What I want to highlight, though, is that this new system is eligible for rebates from the Metropolitan Water District, mm -hmm. equal to $35 per station. And with well over 10,000 stations in the system, yeah. when the project is complete, GRF will receive more than $350,000 in rebates. Wow. And I should mention staff's working with MWD as well as El Toro Water District right. to obtain the rebates. But again, it's a very exciting project. Not only will it save water, which mm -hmm. saves money, we'll yeah. also get significant rebates for this project. So. Exactly, and, and that's just it. And, you know, a lot of time, I just had it this morning. My, my neighbor turns on his um, sprinklers at like five in the morning. Well, my truck was just doused full of water <laughs> and he's asleep. So he doesn't even realize that that thing's shooting out into the street or wherever it might be going. So, you know, something like this too, where staff can actually monitor, you know, these kind of areas that are causing, you know, high, high uh, frequencies of, of water that go out there that they can, you know, monitor it and take care of it and realize they got to fix that part. Right. Now. It's great. Awesome. And then I just wanted to share a couple of announcements mm -hmm. of key, key occurrences in mm -hmm. the village. The first is that the Performing Arts Center, effective yesterday, expanded its hours, working towards getting back to our mm -hmm. pre-COVID levels. The new hours are Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The box office is open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And the auditorium is open for scheduled events. And of course, those dates and times right. vary. And as additional staff is hired, additional week end and weeknight hours will be added to right. this facility. Right. And I believe uh, Laura Cooley, a longtime employee here in our community, is going to be uh, taking over that Performing Arts Center facility so she has a long history in our community and understands the residents so uh, I'm sure many changes will be happening as well. Exactly very yeah. exciting time there. Yeah, great. And then I wanted to mention the fall prevention initiative this is a partnership between the foundation of Laguna Woods Village and Memorial Care Saddleback Medical Center to provide free fall prevention classes to our residents. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention Every second of every day, an older adult suffers a fall, mm -hmm. and that's one of our leading causes of paramedic responses. Yeah. Uh, classes will be led by medical center staff, focusing on different aspects of fall prevention, mm -hmm. incorporating chair exercises, stretching, and strengthening to help improve strength and stability. The program will be offered as one-month segments in July, August, and September. Three one-hour sessions will be held each month on Wednesdays from 2 to 3. 2.30 to 3.30 at Clubhouse 2. Mm -hmm. And registration is via ActiveNet or at Clubhouse 2 or the Recreation Office. Right. So encourage and people to attend. Absolutely. You know, falls are one of the leading uh, disabilities that happen in our community. And, and then from there, it just uh, sometimes gets a little more difficult for them to, uh, to get around, you know. So uh, very important that you have these fall prevention uh, sessions and that the community kind of uh, becomes uh, involved and participates. And again, that's uh, through your online service of ActiveNet, and that's what we're trying to encourage our residents to do, to utilize a lot of the software in a lot of our cloud services for our community to provide you with information and to sign up for many of these projects that the community and the management is putting together. That's correct. Well, you're going to be going off to the Golden Rain Foundation meeting. That's going to start in about 15 minutes, so yes. we're going to let you go. And okay. uh, good luck with the rest of your day. Thank you, Paul. That's Siobhan Foster. She's our Chief, Chief Executive Officer and our General Manager of Village Management Services, and she joins us here on Village Television every month. We'll be back with more of our program right after this.
Welcome back. Where we have Rebecca Gillard and Willie Phillips here on behalf of a brand new club, and she's so excited. <laughs> Willie is containing her excitement. <laughs> Community Bridge Builders. <laughs> Welcome both of you. I know you're just like beaming <laughs> with excitement. You've been working on this for a long time, along with um, your help as well. So, you know, tell me a little bit about what Community Bridge Builders is. Well, Community Bridge Builders is an assortment of. Uh, residents here in Laguna Woods that have come together and our purpose is to fight bias and discrimination and to promote uh, humanity as one human race. Okay. Uh, in other words, we're just going to want to be peacemakers in oh. the village. Okay, fantastic. And I know you've been working on this for quite some time. So what were some of the challenges that you had? Well, first of all, waiting on the waiting list <laughs> for nine months, three weeks, and four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Down to the second there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but while we were waiting, we were already working. We used to meet at my house. We called it Clubhouse 15. <laughs> <laughs> and there, from the bad, we started the good. From two bad happenings, yeah. we started to work together. And our idea is not that we're going to come and change people. What we want to do is to create a sense of togetherness mm -hmm. where it becomes exciting to get to know each other, to hear about other people's lives, right. other people's cultures. And then, and only then, we can really work together for the same goals. So now you, you have an awful lot of, of members already and they keep calling. So now what is it that they're calling what, what's promoting them to want to come to be a part of the group? What, what is it that, they, that they're looking for? Uh, fellowship, uh, the sense of family, mm -hmm. and uh, we're just, uh, you know, some of the people are fearful and, and, and some of the people have been uh, abused and they mm -hmm. want the courage, uh, they, they want someone to stand with them so they can have enough courage to speak right. back and right. to speak out. Well, we do see an awful lot of um, things going on in our nation and right. other countries right. and it is frightening because you yeah. want to believe that we all are okay yeah. but sometimes we're not even just walking down the street and so yes, exactly. is that kind of your your thought is to educate people so they aren't afraid yes yes and we have already started doing trainings of small groups and presentations of larger groups okay. so in the small groups what we train people is to first be attuned, because many times the messages that are hateful messages are not that open. Mm -hmm. And then to become an ally, even if it's not you that is receiving that hateful message, to stand up, recognize it, and speak up, not with a, with a fight, but with questions, with openings mm -hmm. for a dialogue. Where are you coming from? Uh, where am I coming from in these beliefs, in this? And s speaking up as one, mm -hmm. as a village, mm -hmm. and making very clear that we are together against prejudice, mm -hmm. and we stand together in togetherness. <laughs> right, right. Now, when you, when you say that you are doing trainings, what is it you're training people to do? It's a two and a half hour training where we show a videos, mm -hmm. two videos, where people first talk about what those messages are, mm -hmm. and then the second one is why don't people, people speak up? Most of the times it's because of fear, mm -hmm. or we don't want to get involved, or it can be taken as, okay, if I say something, then I'm the oh, racist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there are ways that you can speak up and become an ally, because if you stand silent, then you're agreeing. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. We're not agreeing to right. that. Now, Community Bridge Builders is a nationwide, right? It's a nationwide. No. It, it's not a no. nationwide. Is there something else that's yes, related? There, okay. is, there is an organization that is Community Bridge Builders nationwide. We are Laguna Woods gotcha. because it's the only organization that is looking specifically at this that is made by seniors yeah. for seniors. Got it. And that is different. However, your training and some of the materials and education do come from that organization, is that correct? No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they come from a company that addresses specifically Perfect. hate and bias. All right, so you're just taking it all on in your own. I love it. Now, you have a speaker that's coming up. You're going to have Jeff Shope. 
Correct. And what is he going to talk about? He's going to talk about his own, his own history. At age 18, he became part of a group of neo-Nazis mm -hmm. and stayed in that group for 20 years, wow. becoming the leader, and that group became the largest neo-Nazi organization. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to be telling what happened in his life that he decided to change 180 degrees, mm. and now he's working for peace and understanding. Wow. In the United States and throughout the world, mm -hmm. he was invited to Oslo for the Peace Prize, mm -hmm. and he's wow. really a real way of looking at how change can happen. Okay. So when you, when you talk to members who are looking to be a part of this, what are some of the things that, um, have you had experiences, either one of you, um, that are helping you to deal with similar situations? Oh, I've, I've, I've had several. Uh, what I'm telling people is that, you know, when you talk with people about racism, they say, well, I'm a non-racist, I'm not a racist. Well, we are anti-racist, which means we're going to do something proactive instead of uh, reactive, reactive or just to be yeah. dormant. We want to do something to uh, promote oneness. And, and another thing is, in the group training, I've, I've, I got a tool that I needed for a long time, and I was, I'm so happy that we had that training. When, there's a, when you're in a group setting and someone says something or tells a joke or tells a story that's, that's racist, you can just speak up and say, ouch, and, and then what? what? What happened? And then that opens up the window to, to, to discover and explore what that did for someone in the group. It might not, might necessarily have been you, but yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a segue into a conversation. Right, and it's not it's not like coming off as exactly. offensive, yeah. threatening, yeah, yeah. yeah. threatening, yeah. exactly. And yeah. how about you? Well, I've lived in three different countries, mm -hmm. and I was a minority in all of them. Okay. In Mexico, I was a minority because I'm Jewish. So, okay. Then I lived in Israel. There, I was a minority because I'm Mexican. Got it. <laughs> then I came to the United States, and then I was a minority because I'm Jewish and Mexican. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, and messages have been part of my life, those hurtful messages, since I was six years of age. Right, right. So, I know how it feels, mm -hmm. and I've learned to recognize it, mm -hmm. and I've learned also to speak up. Well, and it sounds like you guys are doing a great job because you do have people who are continuing to contact you yeah. to learn more about what's going on. And I think that's great because I don't think it's just going to be a certain type of person. It's going to be everyone. Yeah. Yes. Because everyone is dealing with it. It doesn't matter where you're from, what you look like. Everybody are having issues. Yes. And so congratulations on Thank getting you. this uh, group together, both of you, fantastic. And let's just yeah. remind everybody one more time that your event is on Monday, May 15th at 7 p.m., Clubhouse 2, the admission is $10. There will be refreshments. And is there anything else that I might have missed? Just that our club is not political. Right. We want people from every point of view. Exactly. Religious, whatever. Well, we said everybody. Yes. Everyone. So there you go. Yeah, it, takes, it covers everyone. <laughs> All right. Thank you both so much. Right. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Thank you. Thank you. If you want more information about the Community Bridge Builders here in Laguna Woods Village, you can go to LW Community Bridge Builders, well, at gmail.com. So send them an email or you could call them at 949-452-0464. We'll be right back. a couple of minutes to spend with you before we end our program, but we want to tell you about a Club Expo that's going to be going on in your community. That's Club Expo 2023. That's going to be Thursday, May 18th. That's from 10 o'clock until 1 p.m. in Clubhouse 5, and it is free. 
It says, discover the many clubs and activities in the village and food and refreshments for purchase from Martinez Catering. And that's going to be again on Thursday, May 18th at 10 o'clock in Clubhouse 5. And it is free. So it sounds like a great opportunity to get out there and uh, meet some new clubs and meet some new neighbors that you have in your community. One last thing we want to tell you about is the village renaissance that's going to be happening here in our community. That is Saturday, May 20th. That's at 11 o'clock, and it's going to go until 3 p.m. It's held at the Equestrian Center, beautiful facility right there on El Toro Road. Tickets are $10 at the door, and they're asking for cash only. They'll have a Shakespeare, dance, music, wares by the village clubs and artists, and a blacksmith and games. Sounds like a fun time. We're also going to have knights on horses and a queen's court. So be sure and join them. That's going to be on Saturday, May 20th at 11 o'clock. And they are asking for $10 at the door. And be sure and bring cash. And we'd like to thank our Meridian Laguna Hills for sponsoring that with the Equestrian Center. And be sure and get uh, your tickets over there. Or if you have more uh, questions, be sure and email recreation at vmsinc.org. Hey, let's take a quick look outside. It's still going to be kind of a cooler, drizzly day today. Uh, a lot of cloud cover for the next couple of days, and the temperatures will be into the low 60s uh, during the day. And then, of course, in the low 50s overnight. Looks like a chance of rain on Thursday, and then a little bit of clearing on Friday and Saturday. So we'll see if the weekend kind of turns into a nice one. But definitely cooler temperatures for the next couple of days. Uh, be sure and get that walk out early in the morning and enjoy all the many things happening right here in your community. If you're watching our morning program, be sure and stay tuned. The Golden Rain Foundation will have their regular meeting. That's going to be at 9.30 a.m. live right here on Village Television. Thanks for joining us here on Village Television and this day. I'm Paul Ortiz, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Hi, I'm Jack. And I'm Christine, and we're the owners of the Jewelry Box Estate Buyers. Whether you're looking to liquidate an estate or sell your jewelry, there's one thing you need above all else. And that's trust. Trust that the people who are buying your treasures are treating you fairly. And if your heirlooms need repair or appraisal, our master jeweler and graduate gemologists are here to help. At the Jewelry Box Estate Buyers, it's, it's about trust. Hi there, I'm Bob Eubanks. Remember me, I'm the king of whoopee. <laughs> and you're watching Village Television. But everybody does. <laughs>